Hello, we are live. Today is 28th of April 2015, hmm. 2.18 in the afternoon, Eastern Time. Hello, everybody. You can find us on humancolony.org and search um, Google Plus for the word HUCOLO, H-U-C-O-L-O, abbreviated Human Colony, and you will find us. You can um, uh, email, contact me through email, uh, and if you want to be invited to this, uh, to this, to participate in these hangouts, uh, email me the request. My address is max at humancolony.org. I also offer uh, private channeling sessions, and I also offer um, technical computer tune-up, remote tune-up. I would link to your computer with your permission, with your presence, in your presence, and and uh, remove the bloatware, uh, mal malware, uh, uh, viruses, uh, and set it up so it will work normally without uh, without different hackings and stuff. And I use free software, and I'll share uh, the links with you. All right. Interesting. My commercials uh, had a couple of people drop. Anyway, we are starting now. Is anybody with me today? Hey, Matt, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How's oh, it going, wonderful. Max? Wonderful, good. Um, and Gabriel, you are here too? Yes. Excellent, thank you. Mm. I'm thinking about uh, letting uh, there to be a collective group of uh, like concilium or a panel of aliens and switch freely like they do sometimes with Jim. But, but we'll see how it goes. I don't want to force it, but if anyone, if they want to switch, I will let them switch. Can I, have... can I, can I do a blessing before? Of course. Yes, bring the most enjoyable, make this exciting exploration of yourself as well as us and the entities up, up there. And it's going to be absolutely amazing, wonderful energies we're going. We create like a triangle circle around our energies together, holding hands. And every, if the freaking goes down on one point, we hold it up and support each other because we are co-creating this moment together in a very exciting way. Thank you, Gabriel. <sighs> Hello. Uh, Rojo is here. Hi, Gabriel. Hi, Matt. Hi, everybody who will be watching later. Hi, Rojo. Hello. Matt, how is your back pain? You wouldn't believe it. It's like uh, day and night. Nice to hear. So... I want to add a little more about the back pain and healing of the back pain and normalizing the back pain, so the back function of the back of the spine, so you better understand what is happening and how to deal with it. I also have some back pain, so I can also <laughs> uplift for this. Ah, thank you. <laughs> That's why you both are here. <laughs> ah, so the back pain is in part uh, a blockage in the energy flow. In part it is a blockage in lymphatic flow. If you know lymph is mm, just another type of fluid similar to blood but different. It is white, whitish yellow. While blood is pumped by what? By heart. The lymph is pumped by the vessels themselves. The lymph vessels 
they pump lymph through the body. And it is the second very important fluid in the body, second after blood, or in parallel after blood. It removes the junk and dumps it in the digestive system. So toxins, the pains, the trauma, mental trauma, negativity, mental negativity, spiritual, emotion, negativity, it is removed through lymph, in part through lymph. It is encoded in molecules and dumped into lymph. So when people say clearance of the body, detox, 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 that is what it is. It goes into lymph and into blood, but more into lymph. So physical fluid movement, chemistry works in parallel with energy movement, which is just beyond the physicality, very near, it's etheric body, energy body. And, you know, on the level of back, in the front and the back there is root chakra, little below, and sacral chakra, and solar plexus chakra. So mostly these three are affected. There is a vertical flow from the top to bottom. So root chakra is grounding. It's the main one which sends the energy directly down. And sacral chakra is the first one, or second one, depending how you define. All right, it's the second one going this way. It's a vortex, and it's the flow in both directions, forward, backward, and it sticks forward, sticks backwards. And it can be blocked, it can be unblocked. How do you unblock it? Hmm. How do you unblock it? Um, what's really helped a lot is putting my hands on it. Yes, yes, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, put your hands on it. You can put your hands on it while you're doing anything, especially when you're meditating. You put your hands wherever, wherever you like, but usually you feel where to put them. Trial. Ah, Dimitri, can you? I'll bring Max back, I'll block Dimitri. Ah, trial, trial. Ah, thank you, Gabe. Ah, wonderful! It was like you were seeing you, you're painting a painting inside of you and showing it. You are a great artist, Max ah. with enemies. and it feels wonderful. It felt like you were singing, and the singing part is bringing out your artistic talents to us. Hmm. Thank you. You are too, too, how do you say, it's too sweet. Thank you. Anyway, so placing hands and sending energy. Hmm. How do you send energy through hands? You just intend it and sense, feel for the energy to flow. You can feel it when it exits. And sometimes you feel like zzz on the finger or any other tickling, pickling, not, not pickling, pricking, pick, pricking or tickling, yes. Or you feel it in the body where it goes. And when it goes in, you actually feel numbness, numbness. It becomes numb and stiff, and it's good. During the meditation, it's good. You don't want it stiff when you are moving around, when you are awake, but when you in meditative state or in dream state, stiff is actually good. It's healing. It's another state of living tissue when 
different things are happening. And it's a clearing process, like warm and stiff is very good. Ah. Now, in Qigong and sometimes in Reiki, they also use that movement. If there is, I'll take something neutral. If there is uh, dark energy there, if they sense it's pain and it's accumulation of negativity there, they, they kind of pull it out and throw it away, pull it out and throw it away, pull it out and throw it away. Sometimes they call it mm, energy surgery or something of that sort. But it doesn't matter, you just take it out and throw it away. And many, many do that, yes. I don't know if it's more symbolic or practical, but it works. <laughs> now, hmm. why would there be a blockage? One way there could be a blockage, it could be that other systems involved with the same sacral, sacral chakra, these are blocked. So it is important to keep all the systems flowing well. It's a, it is like many wheels turning or spirals going or pendulums working. So they work with different frequencies, one like that, and another one, rum, rum. And it is a sophisticated ener energetic machine and also sophisticated mechanical, electrical, biological, chemical, and so on. So, which systems are controlled by sacral chakra? Sexual and lower digestive tract. tract. and sacral chakra and root chakra close together so root chakra is also busy with walking so to make your lower back work properly you want to keep all these three components working nicely regularly so, of course, you don't want to be walking when you are in pain. But when the pain subsides, especially when it subsides naturally without painkillers, you want to take a brief walk and walk as it is comfortable, but don't overdo it. Do it as it feels comfortable. And it normalizes the flow of energy, of blood and lymph, and also gives proper stimulation to nerves. You see, the nerves function well when they're stimulated. If you sit all the time, the nerves crave for stimulus. And if they don't find it, they create it for themselves. They create inflammation. They want to be stimulated, to be healthy. D doesn't a part of the body want to connect to the entire body? I feel very uplifted when I connect it to my entire body and allow my body to connect to me as well and allow the energy to flow through my body in a very beautiful way. Do you have anything to share about that idea? I missed the first part of the question. So you're asking the entire body, should it be working well? No, connecting the entire body to the entire body. Sometimes you feel like some part of the body doesn't connect to the other part of the body. Ah, of course, of course. Uh, the whole body balancing, of course. Oh, swimming is great. Yoga is okay. If you are, if you can, if you can tolerate sitting in uh, and slow movement, some people are perfect with that. Some people are too impatient, impatient to do yoga. Qigong is great because it allows you to move in a certain fashion, which allows to 
help the flow of energy through the body. Um, swimming, that I say, walking around, playing, things of that sort. Of course, you don't want to, if your back is inflamed, you don't want to harm it because when it is inflamed, it's very vulnerable. Nothing stronger. You keep your, how do you call it, big belt, keep it on you and don't stress it more because when it is inflamed, it's much more vulnerable. There is cartilage there, cartilage. It is transparent, lucid stuff, which you see on chicken bones, if you if you saw chicken bones ever. Uh, the transparent stuff, it's plastic. It is growing when you're a child, and after you grow up, it is plastic. It doesn't restore, it doesn't repair, because it's single use. Um, unfortunately, so far, human medicine official Mainstream approved doesn't restore cartilage yet, but it is very, very close to be doing that. So say in about 10 years, that would be commonplace because the, the, the science is already there. It just didn't get through approval hurdles yet, but the, the science is already there. In any case, you want it to be restored naturally. You can't restore it, nature. You don't want to hurt it, so so you don't because you don't have to, a way to restore it yet, other than through, of course, miracles, other than through miracles. Oh, where I was? Um, sexual function, yes. You want it to be normalized, um, and digestive function. You want it to be normalized, and of course, you know how to normalize digestive function through proper eating. Yes, through proper eating and drinking and things of that sort. Do it with the proper attention and mm, do it everything, all of the above. Do it in meditative fashion, in a meditative fashion, and then it normalizes. Yes. Hmm. I think this is everything. That's what I wanted to deliver. For the start. No, no. Oops, is sorry. It is it also the mindset and and belief system of the person how they can flow with unease and eating? The last word was eating? No, the mindset, the mind and belief system in the body, the person. Yes. yes. Was that of also course. involves with the enemy? Of it course, does. of course. Mm, it is about letting things go. You see, you often, how it works, you strive to achieve something. And then you hit the wall or hit the reflection of your intention. And you create the vortex of pain, mental pain. And it can be anywhere. Actually, it can be anywhere. But if you carry a large mental load, a large load of responsibility, and if you are in a hurry and under stress most of the time, under stress, it could precipitate anywhere. But if it is a pressure of responsibility, it often precipitates in the lower back. Why is that? I wonder. I don't know. It just happens. And when it precipitates, it usually doesn't manifest physically yet. It is just pain. So if you're smart enough, if you have tools appropriate, you can get rid of this energy, dark energy, before it manifests into inflammation. And the prescription here, as was said before, is delegate, delegate, delegate your responsibility to others so you don't carry that load anymore. Because it is your responsibility to offload the load if you cannot carry it anymore. Because otherwise, you will get sick and you will, the things will, wouldn't get done. So if you feel it's coming, you have to offload, so you're responsible. You say, I'm getting sick, 
I cannot do that. And as soon as you offload this, the, the pain could go away or you can easily flush it away one way or another. Mm, detox foods, garlic, cooked onion, uh, cayenne pepper. These are classical ones. Greens, 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 greens. Garlic, cooked onion, cayenne pepper, and greens are great to get rid of the first appearance of the dark energy, dark mm, painful energy. It doesn't always work, but it is sort of classical way. And it, if you you will get the feeling when it should work, when it shouldn't, so you would use it appropriately. Don't overdo any of that, especially cayenne pepper. You don't do it all the time. You do it only to clear that out and stop. Turmeric is interesting. We, there's this yellow one. It's also called curcumin or turmeric, yes. Hmm. Uh, but it is somewhat different. It's more on more advanced stages of inflammation just to calm things down. Just to calm things down. All right. And then if it inflames, hmm. it is largely a system problem which is central. It is connected to the brain, you know, how do how does lower back how is lower back connected to the brain? Hmm, through the spinal core, through nerves primarily. But it is physical connection. And obviously there is energetic connection. So if you clear up your mind, your back will should clear too. So let us work to be done in parallel on mind and on the pain. So in the mind it's called letting things go, getting rid of pain, letting get letting letting pain go, getting rid of belief systems, that thing. Yeah, that sort of thing. And how do you do that? Yeah, Sherry, you know all that. Yes. Mentally, how do you let things go? Am I here alone? Hey, yeah. everybody. Yeah, you got some new members in, too. So how do you th let things go from your head? How do you clear them out? Stop Stop talking about them, focusing about it. Explore the idea, focus on the ideas that you want to create instead of the ideas you don't want to create. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I wanted to hear another word. What is another word? I, when I when I meditate, I seem to just release things that I don't need to worry about. Yes, how do you release? I wanted to hear another word. I think maybe it is coming to you. Let's focus on the pain. What is that pain? Somebody offended you, usually, or it was unfair, or there fade, your path was crossed and you cannot move any for, for further, you made a mistake or somebody else offended you. So what is the first step? Recognize it. Yes! <laughs> and, and forgive it, of course. Yeah. I'm sorry, maybe it was all too, it was too obvious, but forgiving yourself and give, forgiving others, unless you already beyond fear, beyond offense, but if you have pain, most likely you are not. <laughs> so forgiving yourself and forgiving others, that's sort of the movement which is becoming second nature. And you can measure your spiritual growth by the time it takes you to forgive. <laughs> Even the strong offense, how long does it take you to forgive? <laughs> how about fraction of a second? <laughs> oh, how about forgiving in advance? Whatever happens, I forgive you all. <laughs> yes, and letting it go. You let go of the pain, but you keep the lesson. You keep the experience, but... You just accept it, yes, accept it. Recognize, 
accept and forgive in any order. I guess recognize goes first and then forgive and then accept. Or recognize, accept, and forgive together. Yeah, that sort of thing. Mm, whatever, you can do the logistics. Ah. Yes, who do we have here? Hello, hello. Hmm. Let me see. Ah. She. Hmm. I think Dimitri's here. He's, he's new to Google. We have Shika. Hi, Shika. Hi, how are you? you? Hello, how are you? I'm good. Oh, nice to hear. What brings you here? How did you find us? Uh, I was invited earlier and I just decided to join. Uh, how did you, did you find the community? Um, a friend introduced me and I was just interested in probably joining. Ah. Interesting. And what did help you to awaken? When did you awaken? Uh, I believe it was around 2012. Ah. <coughs> what was there? moment of awakening, what brought you to awakening? I was going through a tough phase in my life and suddenly uh, my mother, she actually introduced me a bit and then I started doing research and I met new people. I, I started a lot of research and that made me learn so much stuff regarding spirituality and other things. Uh, who was the first teacher you uh, to bro who brought you to the awakening? Um, like I said, my mother, she introduced ah. me and then I learned a lot from friends I met online. So how can I be welcome here? Let, let me you. give you a blessing. Mm. Mm. I send you hmm, an image of butterfly with beautiful colors and purple frame around its wings. Oh, thank you. How can I be of service to you? Uh, I'm just here to listen. <laughs> thank you mm -hmm. so much. As we are on topic on health, do you are you a healer? Uh, yes, I am. Wonderful. Tell me more. Um, well, I haven't really used my ability yet that much. I've tried doing healing a bit for others um, and it has worked but I still need to strengthen my ability. Um, I mostly just do energy healing. I want to learn Reiki and other forms eventually. Oh, wonderful, amazing. Mm. Can you add anything on the topic of we discussed back pain lower back pain, uh, lymphatic flow, clearing their pain, clearing their energy, clearing the blockages. Um, well, I have sent healing to people who have had uh, back pain and what I usually do is I just imagine white light, um, healing light and I send it and I focus and I imagine any pain just clearing up and um, any blockages just being cleared and that seems to help. Oh, thank you much. Hmm. It is a great way. Yes. Yes. Sometimes hmm, transform your patient in your mind especially if it is an older gentleman or lady, older patient, trans, what's that word, regress them to a child in your mind. Time regression helps. Treat them as a child. It allows you to see their initial vibration and also reverses the age and reverses the age and brings them to younger state. Okay. Ah, we have a couple more people. Oh, I have... Mm, ah. Who else is here? 
أتابع Hello, Atawa. All right, bring up your other topics. Um, how well, is, yes. If you don't mind, I did want to kind of mention to you, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of what's going on in Baltimore um, with all the uh, riots, but I watched pretty much start singing peaceful songs and holding hands and changing the whole atmosphere on TV. And I just thought that was a pr really powerful statement to be on TV for the world uh, and shines a light in the time that we're in, I think. Wonderful. Hmm. I miss the news about the riots. Tell me more. Well, uh, looks like there was an issue with the police and a gentleman. They severed his spine and I believe his neck, and he was in a concussion. Yes, I know that's, uh, yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit. There. I'll bring Green <laughs> uh, Hello. Ah, that would be my specialty from now. <laughs> hey, everybody, Grindel here. Welcome. We're here together. Welcome. We're taking turns. I have so much positive energy to give today because I've started channeling today. So, very excited. Oh, you started channeling. <laughs> Congratulations, Mazel Tov. <laughs> Good job, Gaby. Good job. So, about these things, riots. Mm, unfortunately, it seems like it is pre-organized, pre-planned. It is, seems to be, uh, I cannot give you specifics, but it seems to be that it is a takeover of the control of police. That's why they provoke things and they mm, use media to set people against police. Yeah, that seems to be an organized campaign to take over the control of police, replace the control and even possibly replace the police with more negative ones. Unfortunately. Yeah. Grindel, what do you, you think about uh, like I just said, I was watching the TV on CNN and I was just flipping the channel and it looks like everyone started holding hands and just changed the whole entire atmosphere. Mm, that's a good way to go. Holding hands, yes. Uh, Sit-ins were great in their 60s and 70s. Sit-ins. Peaceful, yeah, singing together, chanting, yes, together separately, flowers, symbols of peace, yes, all of that is essential. Few people, few energies, few organizations are trying that's a proper world word trying to bring the energies down and it's up to the masses to the 99 percent what to do with it your higher dimensional helpers and out-of-dimensional, non-dimensional helpers like creators and angels are sending great waves of positive energy which is available 
now. So grab onto it, amplify it, and send it to the 3D reality. Yes, it is possible. It is possibly a challenge which is possible to overcome. Yes, great activity here. Thank you for bringing it up. Thank you. <sighs> Milkina here. Hello. How are you today? We are. I'm wonderful today. I haven't spoken to you, so very excited to speak to you for the first time. Nice to meet you, Gabriel. An honor is mine. Any more people or questions? Bring your topics. What is exciting for, for today? What's your highest excitement? What's, what are you excited about today? And what can I ask for question for? What yes. I enjoy channeling. It's nice to be here. Do, do, I, I am. Have, I have a question about channeling down for you. Yes. Do you, do you feel that you become together with Max as a relationship strongly? I feel very sexually with the beings I channel. Like we become as one, and I opening up myself to that entity. So. Uh, please explain. Um, you said something about sexually, and I misunderstood that. I've become very sexual connected to the entities I channel so far. Ah. And I feel they wish to become that way as well. We hugging each other's enemies. Becoming. Ah. I connect to the entire uh, astral body that they connect to my body. We, we kind of hug entire beingness together. Yes, I would agree. There is some sexual attraction between the energies. Max is mm, actually is also attracted to male energies and female energies but more to female energies. He is more neutral. In past lives, he was often female. And, and being a grandmother, in this life, he possesses his grandmotherly energy. So he is attracted. It's not entirely sexual. It's only partly can be attributed to be sexual. It's more complex, and I don't have mm, terms and words to characterize the other attractions. But of course, there are other attractions here as well. Yes, I am a young, relatively young. Maybe I'm older than any of you, but I'm relatively young, Liron female. Yes. Ah, so interesting. Yes, there is attraction. Mm, we are not here entirely, but it seems to work positively. Max is eager to participate, so we work together. And it's very exciting how channeling works. How the channeler's talents become part of the entity's talents as well. Absolutely, yes. And my talent is very sexuality to some degree, so I connect to the entities very, very close and connection and other, other channelers connect in their own ways and there's so many ways of channeling. That's very exciting and seeing how everybody receives channeling a different way. Yes. 
it is fascinating for us to we wish to be here physically and speak for ourselves. Uh, channeling is an intermediate way for us because it is permitted, we have to use it. Whatever works. We are separated by a veil and this veil is necessary to keep your reality in proper shape and our reality in proper shape so veil is necessary and channeling penetrates the veil through different loops and hooks and technology some things are permitted to transmit and others are more limited unfortunately yes Yes, personality of the channeler, unfortunately, affects much the message. But it's all right now. Yes. I've been, I've been wondering about free will with channeling. How does that work if entity channels in a message to the channeler? Does he became, become that message or... How do he get the shoes? Some things it seems to be more easy to be integrated into the person immediately, the downloads, and some downloads doesn't get out. So Are you saying that the channeler the information restricts the information, censors the information, and violates the free will of no. the Entity sending the message? No, no. I mean, uh, if if uh, if the entity sh sending a message, does it then affect the free will of the humans? If I'm talking about downloads more, channeling downloads information, does it? We don't intend to violate free will. We only answer to full-hearted invitation and before we go and deliver messages we develop pardon we develop a relationship to a channel other cultures might channel without asking but we prefer to go in proper fashion and develop a relationship first. Most wonderful. <laughs> Every civilization has their own way of channeling as well. It, it will be interesting finding out what humanity has for channeling. Th that is my last question for me for now. So if someone else will not ask. Can you explain please? When humanity starts to explore into the star, we will have our own way of channeling that is not the same as other civilization, and we're going to bring it out into the universe to other civilization and connecting there. Yeah, I see now. You are thinking yeah. about you channeling to other new developing civilizations. Yes, and I'm talking about whole hum humanity, how the, as a race we're going to work with other ETs. That's I see. Yeah. We have a conversation now, so I'm channeling to you, you're channeling to me. Mm, I think that is a good model, although it's a little bit one-sided, but the conversation goes both ways. So. We have a sense of the style of humans. Yes, it's very personal. They, you are thinking more about yourself and less about the global representation. But thank you for bringing the global idea up. Yes, other civilization would more speak about 
global things, global culture or galactic culture, and less personal, less about their person. It is actually quite impolite to focus on yourself without being invited to focus on yourself. But it's okay, we understand. Yeah, Maybe I, this is what I excuse me. Maybe this is what the humanity will bring to the galaxy. More of personal expression. And I, I feel I came here to experience the going from not having the connection with the universe to a race that going to have the connection and I get to be part of it in the middle and seeing how it's going to expand. It. It's so exciting to me. I agree. That is uh, an honorable goal. Yes. It's nice that you are thinking in galactic terms. Although it's not surprising. We would urge you to think more into practical, down-to-earth terms. That is our suggestion. Take it as you wish. Congratulations on your beginning of the channeling adventure. Keep in mind that you can develop your own style. Yes. I like your energy. It is very unearthly though. Bring it down to earth. Very logical you are. Very unbounded, free, unafraid. Thank you for your lack of fear. Thank you for understanding me. Pre appreciate that a lot. But if someone else want to ask a question, they can feel free to do it. All these people here. Oh, please do if you like. Anybody. I'm Melkina Aliran. I'm to, here to serve you. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Oh, Matt, hello. Hello. Um, let's see here. I have a question for you about any advice from my spirit guides to me. All right, let me explain. It is an artificial connection here. It is when we get here, we get disconnected largely from us there. It's more of our personality and ideas. So these kind of questions are hard to answer in this setup. Mm -hmm. We are here with Max, but we are beyond the veil. The veil separates that part of my personality from the other part of my personality. Specific needed ideas. If I understand the need, I can get the download. Okay. Uh, to better advice to reach them sooner. I don't understand. Excuse uh, me. I'm sorry, I uh, haven't been able to reach my spirit guides, and I know I have a Kodiak bear, but I would love to learn more. I see. Spirit guides, yes. Ah. 
Let's start from your highest excitement. What's your highest excitement as of today? Um, being here with you. Mm, thank you. And beyond that? Um, you know, I'm in a stage in my life where I'm kind of the first time able to slow down and uh, take a break and get my life together and that's really where I'm at right now um. absolutely contemplation yes don't get distracted and work on that and do it more often yes mm. The spirit guides are there for you. As you go down, incarnate, you ask them to keep an eye on you. Keep in mind, they don't have your experience. These are their spirits of humans and not humans who lived usually in the past and the humanity now is in a stage which is so different that only you really understand what is happening and then they usually have the perspective of the past but because they are in spirit they can play with time they actually play in real time with you, but they can stretch their time as they need. The goals of them are to help you learn your lessons and get in situations when the level of lessons is higher. It's not that the lessons are easier, but the level of lessons is higher. It's like if you passed the third grade, they wouldn't give you the lessons of the first grade. They would give you the lessons of the third and fourth grade. That is their primary mission. But it is up to you where to go and they are not to interfere unless you are going off the path completely and ruin the plan for lessons, which is hard, but it is possible. How else can I help you? Do you have more questions? Because you are in a state of contemplation, it is a time of choices. It's a time of purification and letting things go. It is one of the times and states where your free choice is so free to choose. You're not in a hurry to choose. You are, as it is in the spring, so many roads are open in front of you. Mm. They are listening, they are watching. They usually don't read your mind. It's up to you to think and to tell them what you want to tell them. And best would be to tell it aloud. Speak it up, write it down, speak it to your friends. Say it loudly and put the emotions in what you speak. This would be the message for them. And unfortunately, the way to speak back is very limited. They are not actually permitted to speak to you much yet. Not much. Unless you do channeling and speak mm, telepathically to them through the veil but not physically, they cannot speak to you physically. You are still in this predicament, in this 
3D world where miracles are limited to absolutely necessary. They cannot come and wave you, hey, I'm here. No. It's the hmm, an artificial reality in which it is stripped of proofs. You still have to choose, you have to make a leap of faith if you choose to without any proof. That's a predicament, that's a challenge, that's your test, that's a paradigm. Choosing without the answer and choosing without the full knowledge. Making choices without knowing what will happen next. No, not knowing the future in a very linear fashion. Choosing, that's the predicament. And add to that that the errors which you make and others make are here by design. They change from day to day. The error level changes from day to day, but you are destined to make errors. That's here by design in this matrix. And miscommunication is here by design. It's a choice of human collective to put that percent of miscommunication every day. Whatever I say, whatever you say, whatever anybody say, people who love each other dearly, they say to each other, and then they double check what they said and what the other person heard. And they can measure miscommunication, misunderstanding. It's there by design. It's, it's not that they say it wrong. It is something in the matrix that makes it mismatch, miscommunicate. Does it help? Very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. You see, when you don't have specific higher excitement, higher goal at the moment, everything looks equal to you. And you might find yourself lost. Dream. Play. Pick something which feels interesting, potentially interesting. Explore it at least in your mind. And when you make this first step, everything changes because of the perspective. Then you're welcome to come back and try another, but another direction. But as you do these steps, every time you come back, you come to the new level. It's like a spiral. You go and come to the new level. You go and come to the new level. So there is no way to go down. If you, even if you don't do anything, you still raise. Sorry, you still rise. You still rise. But if you do something, at least something, and if you rise, if and you do it with passion, and with integrity and with the purity, you rise much higher. And that's that's the main secret. That is the goal for you, for anyone to be here, to rise as high as possible. And as you rise as high as possible, to bring your peers up. You have to have peers connect to others, network, find some people, 3D people, which excite you and which are excited by you, with, where, with which you have strong attraction. Find teachers and students. Be a learner and a teacher. That's my humble suggestion. Thank you very much. I You're realize welcome. I'm uh, really good at communication. That's one of my talents. Um, I feel like I can do stuff without even knowing it and like help people that so they don't even have to go to a counselor or sometimes better than a counselor. And uh, I've noticed that a lot all, all my life. Yes, I agree. 
but it's hard to be a counselor without having experience. Exactly. That's why I like you. So don't be surprised. Go ahead. I was going to say that's why I liked your wording, teacher and a student. Yes. Don't be surprised if your guides guide you different directions and every time you fail because maybe it is the fastest way for you to gain a variety of experiences. Don't worry about failure because it is still an experience and even if it is a failure you still learn things and then you can teach others here and later there. Yes. Mm. Hello. Do we have anyone else who wants to speak? I will bring Roho. I think Gouda wants to say something. Ah. Hello, Roho here. Who wants to speak? Anybody? Anybody have something? Ah. No, I no. want to speak then. But if you want to interrupt me, go ahead. But if you have already something to 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 tell, uh, begin with uh, with that. We will uh, question ah, after. Gorda, hi. How are you today? Nice no, and you. Is your name Mark? Yes. Yes. Hi, Mark. Yes. You don't look like you have been uh, looking on camera. Quite different. <laughs> what does it symbolize? This. <clears throat> Is it an alien? Uh, it's old uh, tune movie. Oh, it's a robot. I think it's a robot. A robot. Ah. What does it mean for you? Why do you pick red robot? Mm, because he's he does not have an other color for this one. Ah. Red robot. Nice female robot. Or young female robot, or young male robot. Hmm. Interesting. What's your favorite color? Uh, I think it's red uh, or blue. I don't know. I'm not sure. Ah, that's troubling. A person who doesn't know favorite color is lost. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Them. Have too much soup. Ah. What you? What's your favorite book? Oh, book. Uh, I love uh, Isaac Asimov. Ah, interesting. Okay, I see. What's your favorite movie? Dune. Uh, you know June? I heard of it, but I have no clue what it is. But I heard of it. I will Google it later. Thank you. <laughs> mm. What's your favorite kind of dogs? What breed of dogs? I don't know. What well, dogs is the all the same for me. It is all good uh, all good pet. How oh, interesting. If you have a chance, ask same questions to others and you will have a measure how different your answers were from others. And they're quite different actually. You don't seem to be much from this reality. You are an outlier. I can mm, that's my my initial observation, I think. Don't take it too seriously. Out what? Outlier, meaning in science there are the measurement and some people are in the middle and some people are on the sides. On the side they're called outliers because they are out 
lying out of the cloud. Um, just unusual, I would say. Nothing wrong about that. It's nice to be unusual because the middle is most confused. You know that for sure. Thank you. I hope I didn't offend you. I didn't mean any offense. I just ha was hoping to help you with self-perception. OK. What's your highest excitement? Uh, it's to be with you here. Ah, that seems like a thank you. It's my honor. Uh, yes, it is my highest assignment to speak to you here as well. Okay. And it's actually a pleasure. What is the next higher excitement of yours? The next, next today, next. Uh... Next today, just in general. Today, yesterday. Oh, I think it's coaching, wake up people, help people to to be their self. Oh yes, so it is. It is about self discovery, right? Yeah, it's fun. Wonderful, yes. Yeah, discover what's your favorite breed of dogs, and tell us. Hmm. All right. Uh, would you like to define highest excitement? To define? Yes. What is it? Uh, what exactly you you want to uh, understand about this coaching or uh, helping people to to uh, to be more themselves? Ah, okay. Sounds good enough. Do you have anything else to tell, or can I uh, ask this question to others? It's up to you. Oh, yeah, I have uh, just small one. Oh, sure, go ahead. Yeah, what mean uh, when two people look eyes to eyes and receive one like a like a wave move from one to other one? Inside through the eyes, what is it? Hmm. Hmm. The meaning could be variable, but in general, mm -hmm. the primary thing here is collapse. It's called collapse of the wave function, collapse of dimensionality. The number of dimensions of the reality is reduced when two consciousnesses look to each other and see each other and realize that they see each other. Each other realize that they see each other because of the nature of reality. Usually it's you who creates the reality. And another consciousness, is, another consciousness, another individual also creates the reality. When you create a common reality and look eyes to eyes, mm -hmm. there is a short circuit. It's not always there, but sometimes it's pretty strong short circuit. So the, all the consciousnesses are connected through the tree of life. They are the branches and the leaves and the fruit of tree of life. Mm -hmm. When they create the realities and look at each other, sometimes there is a short circuit. And the whole matrix, matrix, is losing dimensionality and collapses a bit, a little bit. It's short, but that's a primary function of, of that effect of 
seen a wave because the time changes. Their matrix is shaken a bit. Okay. Uh, when you said the time change, the time stop, the time, the time slow down, or it can be anything. It is just a fluctuation. Okay. Could slow down. Could be chopped. Could be stretched. Could be uh, reversed. That sort of thing. It's okay. just. It is all experience. It, you normally experience continuous movement of time, but then you can experience anything. A jump in time, the jump forward, jump backward, repeat, chattering, uh, anything, yes. Okay. But if there is a spiritual close, spiritual connection between these people, if they are close on the branches of tree of life, then that effect is more likely. Especially if there is a charge, one is charged with one energy and another is charged with the uh, opposite of energy which want to interact, which are attracted to each other. Okay. Like um, clouds and ground are charged, causing their, how do you call it? Thunder, like, like lightning, it. yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, and the cold and the hot uh, create uh, some sound in the. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Anyone have a question? Yes, so we wanted to speak about the highest excitement. Anybody wants to comment on highest excitement? What is it? I have a new person. Michelle? Yes. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. Thank you. I'm sort of a little stumbled and blocked. The communication wants to go in different directions, so I'm a little confused. Are you confused too? No. Oh, nice. Thank you. Get me out of my confusion, please. And how so? How would I do that? Tell me about your highest excitement. Well, I would say when you feel good, you're excited. Mm -hmm. What is your highest excitement? I don't have highest excitement. Ah. Oh. Is, is, oh. That, oh. Oh, is that OK? <laughs> All right, so what worries you? What are your troubles? Do I have to have those? No, what are your goals? To be happy. Ah, interesting. What's your favorite color? <laughs> I don't have a favorite color. Sorry, I find you hilarious. This is, this is funny. What's your birthday? <laughs> What's your uh, day and month? I don't need the year if you don't want to say that. Just day and uh, month. December uh, 8. Ah. It's going to be Sagittarius, I believe. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Ah. <laughs> and what's your favorite dog breed? Uh, I don't know. I like lots of different types of dogs. Uh, Huskies are cute. Ah. German Shepherds. Ah. Burtmese Mountain Dogs. Even Chihuahuas, but not when they're like really yappy. Annoying little dogs, the little shits when they're happy. Nice. Mm, are you a good fighter? 
Do you ah. like to fight? Do you like conflict? Do you like to win? Uh, I don't know how to answer that one. <laughs> all right, all right. What brought you here? How did you find us? I just clicked. I don't know. I went on Google Plus today and just clicked on a a link, and I'm here chatting with someone who's asking me questions. Hello, dude. What's up? How are you today? Uh, all right. Are you familiar with channeling? The uh, the term or the actual act of that? Yeah, the term. Yes. Yes, generally. I wasn't. I don't. Yes. Uh, do yes, you like I aliens? Know. Are you into aliens? <laughs> what are aliens? Like we're the aliens. Uh, we're, not concerned, we're the aliens. Uh, welcome here. So, mm, how can I serve to you today? I am here, like I'm an answering machine to give advice to people. But if people don't have any problems, I guess I can entertain you. That'd be fun. Yeah. I guess I should bring Grindel. Yeah, I should bring there. <laughs> ah, that's bad. Ah. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Highest excitement. All right. Um, you come here to learn lessons to get experience. Period. Yeah, that's from Buddhism, I guess. It's Buddhism, Hinduism. They teach that. You know, get experience, learn your lessons. It's like school. Are I you familiar? Oh, you know about everything about reincarnation, do you? I wouldn't claim so. But do you believe in it or do or, or do you not? Yes and no. Ah. Because it's a complicated topic and it creates lots of controversial things. Wonderful. So you know that stuff. Wonderful. So yes, that's the idea. You come here, play the game of life and Learn lessons. Life is the school or the lesson, I guess. Yeah, yeah, like series of lessons, yes. And if you don't have that higher excitement, if you don't make choices, if you don't strive to become better, it's boring. That's it. It's boring. You don't learn lessons. You slack. Yeah, slack. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to slack because if you don't do things, they give them to you anyway. You see it and don't get excited and just want to be happy and they make you unhappy. And spirit guides, your friends up there, you know, that's their job, you know, roll the sleeves and make you unhappy until you find the goal in life and strive for it. You have to be strong, you have to win, you have to be successful and all that nonsense. You see? All right, all right. But you are smart. You just pretend that you don't have high excitement. Yeah, being happy is fine. It depends how you define happy. What makes you happy? Being in love. Oh, all right. That's good. Yep. Good stuff. Tis, tis good. Yeah. I would agree with you. You have very good viewpoints, man. You're a nice guy. I like you. You're very... Oh, thank you. You're sweet. Ah, so, as soon as you try to be in love, ah, that is a whole challenge because you're now not alone anymore. You are with someone or without someone. And by definition, it makes it so much more, the life's more interesting. Yeah. Ah, maybe serving. Yeah, many choose the idea of service. Service to others. Some choose service to self. Some choose service to others. Ah, you know all that stuff. So, yeah. When you're in love, you try to serve and they don't want you or they want it in a different way. 
But yes, if you found someone who resonates with you, who excites you, you excite them. That's exciting. And we have lots of newer, younger people here, I see. I know. Hey, younger people. And younger people are watching us who are still searching. Are you sure you found it? Oh, I don't want to answer, get the answer, but it's a nice question anyway. How do you know when you found Yeah, let's ask it in general. How do you know when you found the perfect match? I think it's when you have someone who cares about you, but it's more than that. It would be someone understanding you and you understanding them and never wanting to harm each other but wanting to have fun and experience what life has to offer. Good. I agree. That will do. Mm. Yep. Yeah. All right. And some people, I, I'm not actually an expert but I will speak anyway. Some people ah, find it right away. They just walk through your life, walk relaxed, and they say, you will be my perfect uh, mate or partner. And the rest of the life they are together and it's perfect match. Uh, and others just the opposite. They find one and fall in love. And something happens, either one falls out of love or another falls out of love. And they go to another one and they fall in love. And again something happens. And this repeat repeats over and over. And sometimes it ends up with nothing, especially in this new Western world. What if we're all already in love? Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Are we all already in love? Mm. Uh, can anyone take care of this noise? Yeah, I want to speak about, maybe I spoke something inappropriate. Maybe that's why the noise was there. Yeah, maybe I did. My message, yeah, I will already in love. Potentially now. It is a process more than the state. Or it is a state more than the process. I was talking about search, search and screening. I guess the new generation doesn't do this this way. The older generation, that's what they did. Many generations. They sort of meet, and they meet it halfway, and they say hi, and they sort of mingle together until they sense if it is appropriate to go to go farther and become closer or not. I don't know. It's obvious, I guess. Any comments here? Any questions here? All right. Oh, Max here. Hey, everybody. Привет, товарищи. Welcome back. I'm new to this, so I was just giving it a listen to see what's going on. So. All right. Hi, Michelle. Nice to have you. Thank you. Uh, I'm still uh, with these energies. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm inviting different beings, and they channel through me. But last uh, f last time, last few minutes, it sort of went a little down. Uh, what I wanted to say didn't come through, and there was blockage on the other side. I don't know why. That's the first time I experienced that. 
That's all right. You don't need to apologize. Sure. Oh, I have Danny. Hi, Danny. How are you? Hello, Miss. Hello, everybody. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Oh, what's new? Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Thank you also for your help. And also, of course, the rest of our friends in uh, this line. Uh, if you already only visit, uh, listen, or just uh, enjoy, it's, uh, that's already a help for us all. So uh, thank you all for this. All right. So Michelle, we are a community of um, of light workers, uh, humancolony.org. Uh, we, um, you know, maybe a hundred people, maybe more. It depends how you count. We hang out very often, um, almost every day, and we have uh, some of our channelers are channel already for quite a time. Gym channels for a couple of years. I just started a couple of weeks ago. Well, honestly, I never really thought about joining something like this or whatever. It was just an out of the blue kind of random choice, and I kind of it resonates with me. It really does, and I don't know what to say about that. I just I've noticed things like I've been writing a lot and noticing writings of certain beings and stuff, and I don't expect anyone to believe me, obviously. But I find it interesting. It's incredibly interesting. So that's why I'm here today to listen to you guys and Sounds hang out. Great. Yeah. Sounds great. It's a perfect place for you. Uh -huh. So we uh, channel usually extra extraterrestrials. We have uh, communications with Pleiadians, Yael, which are um, gray human hybrids with uh, uh, a reptilian. That guy. Uh, was a reptilian, a friendly reptilian. Then there was uh, Arcturians, uh, Syrians. I'm missing someone. Ah, uh, Lyrans, of course, Lyrans. We have uh, uh, we have a Lyran uh, who speaks often to us. And um, our one of the ideas which sparkled the idea was to uh, apply to them to visit their ships. And uh, we started the application process. And it was more than a year ago. Uh, miracles started to happen. Basically, when people apply electronically, they just apply on the site. They send a mail to sign up to go at gmail.com. Sign up to go at gmail.com. So they basically formalize their intent to visit. Usually, right away, same night or a couple nights later, they get a visit from from star beings, star people, they just come in, in the dream state and people say, wow, somebody visited me, it was so wonderful. And they have, some of them have nice spiritual experience. And then some remember visiting their ships, but uh, usually it's not a full memory, it's kind of more like a dream, but these dreams mm, sort well, of... Well, dream recall isn't that hard. I've been dream journaling for three years and I just kind of do it. So I just kind of realized that dreams are life, and life is dreams, and dreams aren't any different from real life experience. Nice. That's just my that's just my point on that statement. Nice, just, nice. Yeah. So you're very uh, very advanced in this way. Hmm. I I guess <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have people who are uh, yeah one of the biggest. Uh, excitements of this community is that people who think they are completely out of uh, the world, they just meet uh, like-minded uh, light workers who, who are also uh, very high in spirituality and uh, and uh, it's just a community where you meet uh, people and it's friendly and mostly friendly. Typically it's uh, yes, typically it's, uh, it's it's nice and spiritual and very sweet. Mm, people also speak galactic languages. Do you speak galactic languages by any chance? No, no, no. No, no. I don't know. This is weird because this is just like such a weird interview thing that I don't understand. No, no, no. It's not an interview. I just wanted to share. So, oh. so basically what happened... Um, yeah, about the colors and dogs it was interview, but about galactic languages... It's the other way around. Um, 
Sometimes we have several people telling the same story, taking turns in Arcturian language, and then a couple of them are interpreting and can actually can tell what was in the story. So that was so amazing. Yeah, we have that on record. And we, we publish most of our webinars, so actually are now being recorded. And mm -hmm. it's published publicly. And um, we have a few hundred of videos, maybe under 300. And uh, uh, these galactic languages things are there. Uh, we have been visited by Jesus several times, maybe two or three times. Buddha came, Mohammed, uh, Confucius, uh, Tesla came, uh, one of the polit political uh, leaders of the 20th century came. That was very interesting. I forgot his name. But when we compared what he said to what uh, was on the video, that was uh, a, good, a good match. So something is certainly going on. And uh, you're already a believer, so I don't have to, to, uh, to make it good more. Just I described the ways. Hey, oh, that's the music in there. Hi, Andre. I, I, I'm sorry I have to mute you because I was speaking through your computer or telephone. On the video, it was a good match. So, something is certainly going on. <laughs> yes, we heard it the first time. <laughs> All right. So, uh, if you want to be added to our, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, no, it work. All right. If you want to be added to our uh, hangouts, um, you can write to me or write to any of the members here, and um, we'll include you. We post invitations. Some of this is posted on our humancolony.org, and some of that is posted uh, in our Hangout chats where you come by invitation. Mm. Did you know uh, other other channel or name, uh, Michelle? Did Pardon? you know? Did you know uh, many other channel was known by uh, many uh, user here, like Roxy, Treb, and uh, no. Uh, no, I wasn't. Are you familiar just... with Bashar? No. <laughs> ah, you are. I don't know that. these people. I don't need, right. just came in this day and listened to some of this and this hangout chat. And I just wanted to add you to my circles and stuff. I'm not really that big on networking. I just kind of decided to come chat. So sounds it's, great. It's I'd like a, to be here and talk. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> That interests you to have a link uh, for these people, these uh, nope. other channeler? Nope. I just added. No, I don't have those. Would you like to have them? Sure. If you want to add me to those, or you can just like send me a, a thing, yeah. <laughs> a, a link so thingy on the, on the side chat. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Bashar, I think I would start with Bashar. Bashar is our teacher. Most of the people come through Bashar. Bashar yeah. has been channeling for 28 years, I believe. And I, I came, yeah, I came to that idea through Bashar, of course, and okay. most of the people. Um, these are, I guess, you know, you already believe in miracles, so I don't have to convince you that these are miracles. But, but um, I guess... The key here would be that you know when we collectively believe in these dreams or exercise, uh, experience these miracles, then they they manifest more in physical life. That is great, and um, mm -hmm. and this way we kind of change the world by collectively dreaming. And that's about it. Um, I bless you all. Thank you very much for co-creation of this interaction. Um, it was a pleasure to meet uh, uh, Shika and Michelle and everybody else I already know. It's a pleasure to chat with you. And I will hopefully do another channel in this evening. And stay tuned, humancolony.org. And my email is max at humancolony.org. And goodbye. Okay, take care. It was nice. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.
Nice to meet you. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.